What is going on friends? Welcome back to the Minecraft Hub channel. Today we are doing part two of the ZetaCraft World Tour. Now we're going to go and check out all of the ZetaCraft member bases. So as I said in the last episode, this server has only been going for three months, so it's still pretty young. There's still a lot of work to do, and especially after all the time they put in the shopping district, their bases are really, really incredible. So let's jump right in. Well, I think what we'll do is actually head to our nether portal and then start checking out some of the main bases. So what I think we'll do is actually work from the south and work our way north just for simplicity. So to start off, we are going to go to this southmost one off the Blackstone. And this is going to be going to Backpack Streamer's build. And he has been doing a lot of digging underground here. Man. Yeah, he has. Set up for a build here. And he's going from the movie, the Hobbit movie. Uh -huh. uh, the, uh, is it... Erebor, is that the name of the place? But he's uh, building the mountain home out front of his cave here. So that giving that theme to the Erebor's uh, castle that's built in the mountain. Ooh, I really like those, like the columned windows. Those things look cool. Using the black stone uh, walls in between the deep slate. Mm -hmm. And they're set back just to kind of add that effect to it. Yeah. Definitely adds depth to the build for sure. Yeah, that's a really cool style. So, definitely still a work in progress, but you can see where he's going with it. And uh -huh. even with like the terraforming on the sides here, and see like this is going to be a huge build when it's done. There's just a lot of blocks still to be placed. Yeah. I think he's going to be making like the gold mines that go with the uh, movie as oh, well. So. Yeah, that'd be very cool. A lot of work still to go, but you can definitely see where he's going with it, and I think it's a cool build so I far. I mean, the server's only three months old. A lot yep. of... Not a lot we're, of time we're at that, yet. We're at that point of the server where people are actually starting to work on their builds. Uh -huh. Now that we've gotten out of the shopping district, which is why we did the shopping district first. So this is going to be Megateca's build. And Megateca is also a hobbit by theme on our server. Sorry, I'm falling through the world here. Oh, uh, yeah, so did I. <laughs> wow. This is looking awesome. So this is Megateca's little hobbit starter village in the bottom of this valley here. And then, if you kind of see around, he's got these little burrows built into the side of the hill right throughout here. And this is a, this is a cool area to start a, a hobbit world. Right? It's a nice uh, his little find. starter um sorting room and i believe this is where he built his first home after he built the underground bottle and if we look up on the cliff side you'll notice a large yellow and black outline uh-huh and that all used to be jungle up there and if we fly up there you're going to see a bunch of spots where megateca has started working on expanding his little village here oh and Megateca is one of our resident armor stand experts. And if you go through the village that he's built so far, you can see he has brought a bunch of life to this village so far with all his little armor stands all throughout it. I love the different colored roofs here. Like, it makes it very colorful and lively. One of the things Megateca has challenged himself this season is he wanted to build this whole village on an angle. So every one of these builds has some level of angle added to them just to add that extra layer of difficulty. I love it. So there, there is no square building in this village, which is <laughs> really cool. And so I believe his plan is to have this village go where all these yellow and black wool mm. pieces are. That's going to be what those are. And then up on the hill to the top of him, I believe he's going to be making some sort of building to overshadow the town itself. But I don't know exactly what that's going to look like quite yet. But just from what he's done so far, you can definitely see where he's going with it. Oh, yeah. And this, this build has a lot of potential for a lot of life, and I'm very excited for the details that he adds throughout it. Yeah, this thing's going to be very cool. So I have been a little bit busy completely re-terraforming my valley. <laughs> if you 
fly around from the center point where the nether portal is, it should go to render distance in each direction. Uh, on this side, we have the guardian statue that overlooks the valley as you first come into that first river there, which I built on my very first episode of ZetaCraft. Epic first episode. It was actually my first time building a statue, so that was definitely a unique challenge for me, to say the least. <laughs> It is cool um, looking. I love the axe. Thank you. And then as for the valley itself, I believe I have somewhere around 45,000 warp nylon blocks placed. Oof. Plus probably another 20,000 miscellaneous blocks for the terraforming of the river itself. So yeah, the waterfall the river above the waterfall and the river below the waterfall until it connects to that central river has all been added to the valley and did not exist at all. This was just a plains, or this was actually a birch forest land here. Ah, uh -huh. man, there are so many different blocks in that land there. It's impressive terraforming. So have a lot of work to do still with adding a build throughout the build. And then after that, I'm going to add some custom... I'm going to call them trees, but they won't necessarily be trees. I have a design for those I'm planning that will use prismarine and amethyst blocks. Oh. Just to add some unique coloration to the valley. So there's a lot of work still to be done here. But this is basically the completion of phase one, which was the terraforming of the valley. And the phases, what? The phases you guys have on this server are insanely <laughs> impressive. Um, if we go to my buildings, though, the one with the copper build, uh -huh. this was the first building on the server. And if we come inside, this is my storage barn where I have a bit of a chest monster growing. And, and the top, I like to show this off, is my 500 subscriber special where I went out and mined 500 diamonds. Oh my god. And what I've been doing, and I'm going to do this for you as well, anyone that comments on your video of 500 subscriber or anything like that, I will rename after the user's name and put them into this diamond so that when we have the world download, you'll forever be a part of the server until I have 500 names in this room. Awesome. So make sure you guys comment down below and actually put 500 subscriber or something for Ricky CFT so that he has to go and rename one of those diamonds in that room and you are forever part of the ZetaCraft world. Also, if I haven't mentioned it yet, go and subscribe to all the Zetas and check out their own episodes. A lot has happened in the world since this world tour, and it is just such a cool world to check out. Their videos are super entertaining, and it's just really a super enjoyable SMP. Yeah, I, don't, I feel like I've never seen anybody terraform with the Nylium blocks before. Me either, which is why I really like the idea of doing something completely yeah. unique and different. And I believe I, when I did it, I said, this might go horribly wrong, but I'm going <laughs> to do it anyways. Well, so far, so good. So Aziz the Great um, w was with us very early in the server, but has had to step away currently. He may come back later. So this is still very early base work here, but he has a really cool nether portal uh -huh. and some biosphere bulbs here that he's making these little domes out of as well as a little terrace and a villager trading hall that I think is kind of cool how he's designed this just decoratively speaking here yeah this place is awesome so unfortunately he had to step away and if he comes back it'd be great to see what he does with it there but with the little time he did spend on the server, he did a lot of work, as well as the Hunt and Sneak mini game, which is one of the unique mini games we have on the server. Mm -hmm. This should be Kid's build here. And Kid is building in a lush cave. Ooh. And this is one of those builders that is all about the interior details, I believe. So if we go to his house here at the top, you'll see a small little house 
that is just jam-packed with functionality and details all throughout it. Where he's like to fit as much as he could in one small area. <laughs> but we go through, uh, he's got another, I believe this is his cow farm here. <laughs> and then underground, I believe he has a little bee farm as well. And he's been slowly redecorating this entire lush cave here with a very unique style to it, I'd say. Uh, down at the end of this cave here, he's got a barn and bridge and tree farm. And I, I like the just the style of depth he's added to this uh, barn here. That's nice looking. I do manage to hit all of the roseberries. <laughs> and then he's got an underground tree farm because why not? And uses manual cutting of the trees. <laughs> this cave is mad. Did he... Was this a natural cave, or did he dig out some of it? I, I believe the majority of this was a natural cave, and he's just been completely redecorating it. Um, not positive how much was dug out and what wasn't, but for the most part, I believe it was a natural cave. I like how he's just managed to fit little blocks and just details. With all the blocks that are placed, you can tell they were placed with a purpose. Uh-huh. I like the... Uh... Like the way these, he's these put, lanterns that he's got hanging. Yeah. It's, I've not seen someone do them in that style before, but it definitely feels... Oh, oh I'm falling. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it definitely looks cool. Uh, it adds a layer of depth to it, for sure. But this is Cablecraft in Eisneroth's Industrial District, which is where they've done most of their work this season so far. They're still gathering materials for their main build. And Cablecraft is our resident redstone expert. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that does all the farms. If we look off over the ocean, you can see a mob farm. And then if we were to fly even farther past and up in the sky, you would see the shulker box farm. But uh, I do know that Cable has said that he will not be doing the shulker farm in season two because it was such a pain to do. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I've never even wanted to attempt one. But he's got his sugarcane farm on top of his hostile mob farm for getting all his gunpowder. And then if we go over the mainland here, he's got a wool farm, the pumpkin melon farm. Uh, if you look off in the distance, you can see the outline of a raid farm that ah. does not function for uh, server reasons. And we didn't realize that until after he built that. Yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a feel bad. And if we follow this rail line out, we have Cable and Ice's Villager Trading Hall. As you can see, it's from the same design as the bargain box which they run. 3x3 three three piston door. And they've got all of the books for the server are supplied in this Villager Trading Hall here. So they've had a lot of farms done in this area for sure. So Diusil 25 started in this little ruined uh, little building here that is at the end of the fjord. And this gives me a heavy Gyrum feel of like one of those ruins that you come across. Uh huh. At least that's my opinion of it and it looks like he's aging some copper out here <laughs> looks like he's also got a stack of ancient debris up there so for diosil's 200 subscriber special he went and mined 200 ancient debris and then asked his viewers what he should do with it and the consensus was to put him on display in the bit world so he has 200 ancient debris that he can't do anything <laughs> with but sit there but if we go underneath here in the corner of this cave Diosil has been re-terraforming the underground cave region under his base here. And I, the little details, like the stairs for the water coming off this say, waterfall. these waterlog stairs are really cool. I, I love it. It's got this little like, mine shaft going on down, and it's like a very lush, watery cave where everything is just melting around it. And he's slowly retexturizing the entire ravine. And this room is brand new, where he's making his storage area here. 
This has been done sometime in the last week, I would say, because it was not here a week ago. <laughs> this ah. is Rupert. And that is a skeleton that spawned naturally with diamond armor. I have never seen that before. A full set? So nice. he felt the need to keep Rupert. <laughs> yeah, I would have kept that too. <laughs> <laughs> But he got that off of his uh, skeleton farm that he has at the end of his cave here. Mm. And then there, the cave continues down more, but he has not decorated any further that I'm aware of at this point. But he's slowly been adding, just covering the entire cave into a custom terraforming job. This would be Mindless. Hey. Hey, Mindless. You want to give a tour of your area? Hey, sure. Why not? Let's do it. How's mindless, almost average, almost average, mindless. Hello, almost nice average. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have a carrot. Ooh, thank you. My favorite. Poverty thing, but uh, I'm technically an elf. Oh, yeah, so th this is uh, this is my nether portal temple. For the, uh, I guess we, we, I guess what I'm calling myself is a frost elf. So this is the frost elf kingdom's uh, nether portal temple. I like it. So, uh, and I finished constructing this uh, in the last episode. Uh, the current upcoming episode will uh, feature the uh, bridge that you're currently on yeah so I, I basically this is pushing my my design and builds to the limit i mean i'm trying to go outside of my comfort zone which is typically medieval mm -hmm. so, uh, picking a snowy biome i thought would kind of push me out of my comfort zone which it has so uh, it's a little bit of a struggle but i think i'm working my way through it that's looking pretty cool so far and the base is also a new addition, which will come out in my next episode. Again, trying to work in the terracotta. To help uh, help with all the quartz, I have all my masons. This is my mason trading hall, so I can trade all of my uh, stone emeralds, and then trade my emeralds for uh, quartz. So this is my storage building. So this is where I, in my storage system, so this is all redstone uh, sorted, filtered. I mean, all generic, um, but again, I, I try the, to go out of my comfort zone with all the terracotta. So yeah, like is that it. the cyan glazed? Cyan glazed terracotta, and yeah. uh, I went with the. I think it's black terracotta on the on the ground here. Yeah, that and glazed terracotta quartz. fits in perfectly. The the idea here in this valley is basically to transform the entire valley that's is between these mountainsides and. Up on, up on this mountain here, I think it's facing more like southwest up at the top of that mountain. That's where I'm going to put basically my, my mansion. There's going to be a mansion, castle. I don't want to say castle. It's, it's more like a mansion uh, where my throne room will be. I don't know. Like I said, I just kind of started in one corner and I just couldn't stop. So <laughs> completed the whole room, fleshed it all out. It's this, basically this just a cobblestone generator. This, and this looks amazing. Yeah, this is awesome. And, and honestly, the chains holding that little terracotta that the uh, cobblestone's going out of might be my favorite touch. Oh. Really adds that depth to the build. I also have it holding the suspension of the water, too. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, this is awesome, mine. Yeah, I really this like is it. Really cool. So if you go up over the hill, you'll see a valley. Oh, yep, there you are. <laughs> and there is Shadow Ginger, who is not in the call. But Shadow Ginger has completely gone detail overload, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Which is a good thing. <laughs> like, I, I love this little valley. Uh, just the way that she's got these different little zones throughout it that just have so much jam packed detail. Like, you've got your little furnace stone area and it's got the mine carts and the dripstone around it and your horse stall back here and i believe she has a little cave in the corner here uh, don't mind jefford <laughs> he's jeff jeff rolled sorry said that wrong but we keep working our way down into the basement you can just see just so much detail oh, and the yeah. way that they terraformed it. Used to some of the mini blocks and candles. 
And this is Shadow Ginger is the one that made the potion shop in the shopping district. Uh -huh. So you can see how she is just jam packing details into a small area and it doesn't have to be huge. It's just just so much use of detail. Uh, these blocks here was a special edition of her head that she had used. Uh -huh. So that's where these I was are wondering going. where that came <laughs> from. Like, so there's a little cave right back in here. And one of my favorite things, this little table here, using the banners, the campfire, and the carpet on the drip leaf. Oh man, that's good. I've not seen that combination before. Yeah, neither have I. So yeah, this is the Shadows Valley. This first portal here is the spawn where we first came in. Mm -hmm. And if we keep going ahead to this one, this is going to be Hypnojo's Cave. But this is Hypnojo's Cave. Now, Hypnojo has the bee farm Jeez. for the honey shop to the right up here. Mm -hmm. And if you were to spawn into this world naturally, this cave... This whole place underneath us was at this level. And this has all been dug out, and all of that lava down there has been hand-placed. Man, this thing is massive. Yeah. Like, just for reference, that is all hand-dug-out cave underneath us, to give you an idea of what Hypnosia has been working on. Even more impressive that he had to dig through all that deep slate to do it. Right. And then over here... You might recognize this statue in yeah. some capacity. <laughs> Looking so a little familiar. I was, I was commissioned by Hypnojo to build a statue replica in this area. However, this area, if you can kind of see where this deep slate line is here, right here, uh, where there's this little shelf up above us, mm -hmm. that is where the ceiling was. And then above that was a flooded ravine all above here. So we had to completely drain out the ravine <laughs> and then custom terraform the ceiling, which was stone, to make this room for a replica of the Guardian. But I believe his plan is to have this kind of connect to that pathway that's going around mm. the statue in there. It's just a work in progress at this point. And then there's also a bunch of caves over here that can still be decorated out. And then he's got a little amethyst farm back in here and a little chess monster room off to the side but for the most part hypnojo's big accomplishment is digging out that much land so this is maya quest so uh this boat maya quest and time architect have a series together called handcrafted and in that series maya had made the boat but it was shipwrecked on the shore so it was half dismantled so he wanted to build the boat fully functioning in this world so he could fly over into the boat itself. And so this is actually the second time that he has built this boat, only this time it's fully made instead of just pieces here. And there is Mai himself, if you want to give a tour of your place. Hey there, guys. Hello. Hey, Mai. Hello. Welcome to the Elven District, I guess. <laughs> the boat so yeah, is if you want to just take a look around. Feel free. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. One of my favorite features are these cannons. I love these cannons here. Yeah, these look yeah, cool. yeah. This was a joint project with Time and myself. We went through a lot of different phases of cannons before we settled on this one. The mini blocks for the cannonballs next to it is perfect. Yeah, that was probably my favorite detail. This area still needs a lot of decoration, but it's coming along. I got a lot of things on my list to do, so. There's a little bit of cargo hold up above here. I like this Nothing furnace special. as, like, the keyhole for this. Oh, thanks. For the prison gate? Yeah. yeah. I'm happy you knew what it was <laughs> right off the bat like that. One thing that I don't like about the version in this world as opposed to the version in Handcraft. I know what you're going to say. Is in handcraft crafted. There's an armor statue of me, Captain Ricky, <laughs> looking over the boat, and here yep. it's just Maya. <laughs> yep. So this is a new biome area that I've been working on, and this is where all the Elveny homes are. Um, so anybody who wants to claim a home can come here and pick one up and make it your own. So I've been spending the last few days working on just kind of creating a biome out here, and this is what I've got so far. Little details all over the place, hidden stuff. So yeah, all these houses are like shells of 
ancient creatures that they've dug up from the ocean or something like that. Ooh. They're all a little bit different, different little shapes and styles to them all, so they're not the same. Over here, you can see the dome in the background. This is where the Elven Temple is going to go. There's that roof area to the right of the dome. I am not happy with that at all. I've been working on it. I've had a couple different designs so far and just kind of winging it this season, not really making designs. So whatever happens, happens. So yeah, not too happy with that just yet. I like the, the design of this floor. This looks cool. All the different woods. Oh, thanks. This is some I've been going for when, like throughout the temple area this season. And then over That's here, cool. this is a Time Architect windmill design you can see off in the distance, probably. Ooh, yeah. Yep. I built one on a different, a modded server that I play, or a modded series I run that uh, actually moves with the Create mod, so it spins. Looks pretty amazing. Oh, that's awesome. And that's just a record farm I threw together for Greek's record shop, and I ran it once for like a couple hours, and we will never need records ever again. <laughs> There's thousands of them. It's insane. Here's the dam. This was like the main feature I came across when I came here and why I built here. Yeah, this is cool. So this was a, like a, an aquifer before? Yeah, it just popped out right here, and I just transformed pretty much the ex ex existing shape. You want to hop down here real quick? This is my main area. I got a big slime farm down below and stuff. Uh, it goes almost to bedrock, but yeah, you know, this is where I spend most of my time. It's where all my storage is. Over here, this isn't, haven't really done much with any of this yet, but... Hope to fill it all out. This was all just stone not that long ago, Maya. Yeah, I've, I've covered the whole area with uh, deep slate. I'm still working um, out in the ocean. I've been pushing further and further out so that it blends a little better. But it's getting there. Different levels of detail throughout. So you have gone in and the entire landscape inside this bay have replaced it with deep slate. Jeez. Yep. And we're surrounding the entire ocean with uh, conduits, so you can breathe all the all the way around. This is a dangerous spot, though. As you see, we got tridents coming and <laughs> drowned all over the place. I have my shaders on still, so all the, the glow lichen and everything looks insane right here. Awesome. Yeah, I put the glow lichen on the tough striations um, to kind of give like a little bit of uniformity to the build, the biome. And it makes a pretty cool look at night, having all that, those lines of lichen like that. How far out are you going? Um, pretty far. I want it to look natural. I don't want it to have just a, you know, a cust a, just a sharp ending or anything. This is kind of the edge over here so far. But up over around this way, you get into the main bay, and that's what I've been most working on lately. Next to the above ground biome area and so this is the big bay i've been spending many hours recently trying to cover this area transform it and hopefully i'll have like little builds all over down here eventually stuff hidden all over that's the main plan i think this is a beautiful build Maya. you have once again outdone yourself oh i thank you the uh the wheat oh, area enough. is in the center it's like a quad wheat farm build your wheat farm there uh, yeah, that supplies the hay bales for the shop. <laughs> and the flying gold thing is his iron farm that falls into our little lava pit there. Oh, nice. Nice. All right, uh, this is Clintoman's Cave of Contraptions, basically. And this is another build where he's got a bunch of small versions of all the main farms you'll find in Minecraft. You've got your melon farm, your sugarcane, cactus, wool farm. So a bunch of little farms all filled into this cave here and then if we go back to the entrance of this cave where we first came in now given uh clinton here is the one that runs the green shop so he's the one mm -hmm. that sells all the green blocks Makes but if sense. you look up in the roof and fly up i think it's chillicothe ohio water treatment plant building okay is what he is based this off of <laughs> He said he saw that building once and thought it was a really cool design, so he's recreating it in Minecraft. Hey. I know that's oddly specific, but... Wherever you get the inspiration. I'm architect still on the call. 
Yep. Uh, you want to give a tour of your place then? Uh, sure. All right. We are right by your portal. So I have one of the few portals that's actually on the roof of the nether, as you guys just noticed. It was one of the first few before we started to actually establish a nether hub. So then also I needed access to make my gold farm because that's where I was making my early game diamonds and continue to do so. Which once we go through the portal, I just emptied out the quartz, uh, quartz amount so we can see how much I'm about to start selling right after this is over. So you'll pop out of the portal into my very lackluster storage room. I have been spending a lot of my time in the shopping district lately. So <laughs> unfortunately, this is my starter base and it's reflecting as such. So I am no interior specialist. So the best thing we can do is just to go outside and admire this thing from out here. So this is my Asian inspired temple. I set out the goal to build in the Asian theme this season. And besides the castle and a few other shops, I've stuck to it. Uh, my mega base does plan on being uh, the Japanese style once I do get to it. But for now, this was just a, a jungle island that I have kind of re-terraformed into my little peaceful uh, Japanese Zen island. So one kind of small little detail to point out is you'll notice that the island is kind of divided in half with the terraforming. We have the left side here that it's all deep slate. Mm -hmm. And then the right side you'll notice is all just plain stone. And that is purposeful. It wasn't just a mistake that I'm going to cover up or anything. The intent is that I want to do like a split seasoned biome. So where one side will be a completely different season than the other, which will then carry over into my mega base. Ooh. But this temple was a lot of fun to build. Like I said, this was on episode one. So I had to go through and while everyone else was beating the ender drag and I'm just trying to collect up nether wart to make red nether bricks for my starter base. <laughs> Mindless, you have been busy for sure. <laughs> Just printing pillars out over here. Yeah, pretty much. But this is just in the span of our tour. Annie took time to do a tour of his own place. So <laughs> yep. We, we right. don't slow down, for sure. <laughs> Multitask all the way. But uh, it has been an absolute honor to have you on, and I think we all had a lot of fun, and yeah, look forward to seeing your video. <laughs> There's a lot to throw at you, so I, I wish you luck in the editing room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely going to be fun. I have two hours and 40 minutes of recording time now, so. But that about wraps up our video. This has been an amazing world to see. I am so glad that they were willing to invite me onto the server to come and check it out. It was a lot of fun seeing all their builds. And we've said it a few times already, this server is only three months old. It still has a long ways to go. And it's going to be super exciting to see all their mega bases done by the end of the season. Definitely go and check out the Zeta Craft members that I'll link down below. All of the names will be down there so you can go and check out their channels. Ricky CFT gave us the tour. Time Architect built the castle. Mindless has doing, been doing a ton of work on this spawn area. And there are just so many more amazing members on this server. So definitely go and check them out down below. Also, if you actually made it this far through the world tour, thank you guys so much for watching. It has been so much fun getting to do one of these world tour videos, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, we can find more servers to tour in the future because it is a lot of fun seeing all the hard work and creativity that content creators are putting into their worlds. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys next time.